Magnus Infernum. Greetings, this is Magnus Infernum. Let's talk about Magic's new framing, template, rules, and format. So how about we start off with the easiest one, adding a center bar above the flavor text. This is to help differentiate between ruling and flavor. With flavor text being italicized and at the bottom, I can't recall ever being confused by rules and flavor. But overall, I'm pleased with the aesthetic, and it can only aid more than it can hurt. And I have a feeling that a lot of changes that are being implemented isn't as much for the physical format as it is for digital. Such as legendary creatures styling with their new border. It makes them seem more special, but also can make them more easily recognizable as a legendary from a distance. In cases like Commander, where a number of people could be playing at a large table, or online, where the cards may be smaller. This is another plus in my book. Let's see if Magic can keep up this trend. Next are the promo cards. And is it just me, or did Wizards of the Coast realize the folly of taking away legitimate promo cards for foil tokens? The promos for Dominaria being Opt, Cast Down, and Shauna, Sisei's Legacy. First, these are solid cards that may actually see standard play. Secondly, I do find it disappointing that the promos did not get new art when compared to their non-promo counterparts. With that said, I am enjoying the look and feel of the new promos. Now on to the ruling. For lands, they remove to your mana pool so the lands just display, add, and then show the mana symbol. Wizards of the Coast stated that the mana pool is a constant source of confusion for players learning the game. I didn't have a problem learning about the mana pool, and anyone I taught caught on quick. Although that is anecdotal. But oddly enough, to my understanding, they aren't actually getting rid of the mana pool. They are just shortening the template of mana producing cards. So, newer players are eventually going to have to still learn about the mana pool regardless. And this is what leads me to believe that this is once again for online play and removing words to remove clutter. Overall, it streamlines the text for the better. Next is the change to targeting spells in correlation to Planeswalkers. Damage will not need to be redirected from the player to the Planeswalker. Instead, cards will mention player or Planeswalker, excluding creatures, creatures or Planeswalkers, excluding players, or any target, so it can target creatures, Planeswalkers, or players alike. There are exceptions, though. Cards that are dependent on an aspect of the player, such as Sudden Impact, dealing damage based on cards in the player's hand, now will only target the player and cannot be redirected to the Planeswalker. Many cards will have an errata changing the target opponent to target opponent or Planeswalker. Also, if cards do not specify a target, such as Hazard the Fervent, in which the last ability deals damage to each opponent, this will not be able to be redirected to the Planeswalker. One significant change this will create is for cards like Leyline of Sanctity and Aegis of the Gods, which will no longer be able to protect the Planeswalker from many spells. Having cards more cut and dry with their wording will now help clear confusion around Planeswalkers, and this may be able to create more diversity with future cards in relations to how and what they may interact with. Next is This Spell. Instead of a spell referring to itself by name, the card will now state This Spell. Another shorthand way to use less real estate in description. Really, I never liked spells referring to itself by name. When it's that way, it potentially seems like the spell could be referring to another card with the same name, which of course is not the case. Alright, here's the more controversial change. Replacing his or her with they or their. I am more than fine with this. As a matter of fact, I thought they should have done this a long time ago. Decades ago. It is more efficient cutting three words down to one. And with Wizards of the Coast implementing Magic Arena, this will help with the space that online versions will have. The controversy comes in with the notion that Wizards of the Coast is forcing New Age social justice warrior ideologies down its player base throat by including individuals who do not identify themselves as he or she. So if Magic is changing in a way that includes a small demographic while most likely not alienating the majority of the player base, at face value, I can't see how this is a bad thing. However, it seems that many Magic the Gathering players see this as a case that helps bring up other cases, such as what could be referred to as the desexification of female characters to better simulate the female demographic, as well as adding characters with perceivably non-white ethnic backgrounds such as Sahili Ray, who is based off of someone from India. I'm not going to argue these one way or another. Whether decisions like these will have adverse negative effects, positive ones, or a combination of the two, may be seen in the future. And like I said, this is something they probably should have did a long time ago. Okay, moving on. Brawl. 
Wizards of the Coast is establishing a new format for all intended purposes is just a standard commander format. Just like the commander format, Brawl has the player selecting a commander whose deck is in line with the color identity. And just like regular commander, there is one of each card in the deck except for basic lands, and there is a command zone. The differences start with the deck being 60 cards as opposed to 100, and the starting life being 30 instead of 40. Also, standard legendary planeswalkers can be used as commanders. Interestingly enough, there is no mention of commander damage, so whether this is going to be implemented in the future has yet to be seen. Oh, and of course, Brawl only uses cards that are in what is the current standard format of its time. Really? I find this kind of pale and shallow. Still a good thing, but pale and shallow. Wizards of the Coast has been trying to do a hard push to sell standard, and just pretty much standard. They tried getting rid of the competitive modern format to force standard, what can be viewed as oversaturation of master sets, potentially overpopulating the market with product, making modern less profitable for stores, forcing them to go into standard. Also, the what would become the temporary removing of decent to worthwhile promos. Wizards has somehow been trying to have it both ways while demanding it one way. What truly makes Commander so interesting and engaging is the extensive card pool that the players have at their disposal. Limiting that to a standard format seems counterintuitive. Now, I know I was just bashing on Wizards of the Coast for forcing standard way too much, but recently they have overturned their painfully obvious bad decisions. With that said, I actually remain optimistic. If they are trying to make cards that would go well with the Brawl format, these cards could just as easily be viable for the Commander format. At the very least, I am intrigued for what the future holds. I believe this makes a good stopping point. What do you think of the changes? Good? Bad? Could you take it or leave it? And do you or your playgroup have any intention of playing Brawl? Let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the content, then press the like button. If you found the video displeasing, then press the dislike button. Bolt that subscribe button to stay up to date with future videos. This is Magnus Infernum. Till we meet again.